This video is on the minimum and maximum of quadratic equations. So first let's go over, uh, remind ourselves what this word here means, quadratic equations. Quadratic equations are uh, polynomials degree two. So that means it's exponent, the biggest exponent on the variable is two. So on this particular section of the video, uh, the learning goal is you should be able at the end of it to determine if a quadratic equation will have a minimum or maximum. So what does a second degree function look like? Either it looks like this sort of U facing up or a U facing down. And whether or not the graph of that degree two function looks like a u facing up or u facing down is determined by the leading coefficient. So this is the number in front of the x squared. If, uh, if the leading coefficient is positive, then this is what the graph will look like. If the leading coefficient is negative, then the graph looks like the other one, the one facing down. All right. Uh, let's go over these two particular words. Uh, maximum minimum so maximum is the biggest value possible minimum is the smallest value possible here it is in a few different languages if the graph looks like this then this particular graph has a If the graph looks like this, then this particular graph here has a maximum. It has no minimum. So this graph uh, goes down forever, 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 going to the left, also goes down forever, going to the right. So since in both of those directions, it keeps on going down, down, down forever, it has no minimum. There is no smallest value. It can just keep on going down forever. But if, say I'm starting at this point right here and I'm going toward the right, it goes up, 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 peaks, and then goes down. So right up here is the maximum, the highest possible point on this. Okay. And if a graph looks like Okay, um, sure. Technical difficulties. Okay, so um, if a graph looks like this, then it has a minimum. Uh, this is just sort of the opposite of the other one. Uh, it goes up forever in both the left and right direction. It goes up, 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 up. So therefore, since it keeps on going up forever, this particular uh, graph has no maximum. But right in the middle, uh, right here in the middle, it is the smallest value possible. It is the minimum. So for a second degree equation, for a quadratic, it will either have a maximum or it'll have a minimum. All right. So with the information here and the information here, you should be able to look at any quadratic equation and tell if it will be, uh, if it will have a maximum or a minimum by looking at the leading coefficient. <clears throat> 
continuing. Uh, the next thing that I want you to, uh, that you'll be learning in this video is how to estimate the maximum or minimum uh, from a table or from a graph. Okay, so here I've created an input output table for this equation. Input output table is just numbers that go in. In this case, the numbers are going into X. Uh, that's the input and the num numbers that come out. Uh, after I put in the X, what number will the F of X or Y be? That's your output. So here I have created a input output table or an XY table. And let's use this to estimate or the minimum or maximum. So first, looking at this, will this have a minimum or maximum? This graph right here, uh, if I were to, or this equation right here, if I were to multiply it, it would equal uh, x squared plus 4x minus 21. And that x squared, uh, the number in front of it, I just said x squared minus 4x minus 21. So the leading coefficient here, the number in front is x squared. Uh, if there is no number there, that is a positive 1 because this is a positive leading coefficient. That means it's going to look like this and it'll have a minimum. Okay, so we know that already. If you notice going more and more to the left of the graph, it goes up forever, it increases. Uh, so uh, we're looking for a minimum here. And so it gets smaller, gets smaller, gets smaller, gets smaller, gets smaller. Uh, the Y does until right here. So there is your minimum. All right, there are a few different uh, websites you can use to help you create one of these tables. Uh, you can also just plug in each x value into your equation. Like if I plug in x equal negative seven, uh, well, let's do example negative eight. Uh, right, negative eight, minus 3 is negative 11, negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1, negative 11 times negative 1 equals positive 11. Okay, so you can plug in your x's to get your y's, and that's one way to create your table. Another way, you can go to certain websites. Uh, here's one. I just googled uh, xy table, I believe. And if we go to that particular website, you can plug in your equation. It'll start off creating a table for you. And then if you want more values, uh, just go underneath this five. And let's say I want what negative four is. When x equals negative four, y equals negative 21. If x equals negative six, y equals negative 9, and that is right here, negative 6, negative 9, negative 4, negative 21. So you can use this to create your table. All right. So that's how you find, or this is how you estimate the minimum or maximum using a table. How about using uh, how about using the graph in order to estimate the minimum or maximum? All right, so here we have this equation, f of x equals negative x minus 2 times x plus 10. And here I'm going to, I could use this particular program, but I'm going to instead use Google. So I'm going to put y equal that 
and Google has created the graph for it. And here, uh, looking at the graph, you can already tell it is the upside down U. So this will have a maximum. If we were looking at our equation here, negative x times x equals negative x squared or negative 1x squared. So that has a leading coefficient of negative 1 or negative. So therefore, it has a maximum. So here, the maximum, uh, if you're looking at this corner right here, this shows you your x and y value. So if I keep on, uh, I'm looking for the biggest y possible, and it looks like right around there, 16. So y equals 16, x equals about a negative 6. This has a maximum. And my estimate, estimate is x equals negative 6, y equals 16. Right there. Now, if you look at the x, it says negative 6.000000, bunch of zeros, and 517. It's because the uh, program that Google's using is that's technically not the exact value for x. So this is only finding the uh, estimate, the about value. If you actually plugged in negative six, uh, if you actually plugged in negative six for x here, if I change my x into negative six, Uh, so negative negative 6 is positive 6. Negative 6 in parentheses plus 10 is 4. 6 minus 2 is also 4. So therefore, you have f of x equals 16. So this is actually an exact value right here. x equals negative 6, y equals 16. It's just that the uh, Google's graphing program here does something a little bit different than that, and so it's an estimate. All right, so this is how you find, or this is how you estimate the minimum and maximum using a table. This is how you estimate the minimum and maximum using a uh, graph. Let's move on. So now we're gonna talk about how can you determine the minimum or maximum by completing the square. Right, so let's say I have this particular equation right here, and I'm going to try to determine the exact minimum or maximum by completing the square. First, I already know this is going to have a minimum. It has a positive, it has a positive uh, leading coefficient. So this will look like the, the u and have a minimum. Okay, let's complete the square. So First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put some space here. Next thing I'm going to do in that space right there, I'm going to have plus Okay, uh, this is going to be, I'm going to take that negative 6, negative 6 divided by 2 squared. Okay, so I'm going to add that and then I'm going to subtract that same thing. Let's simplify this a little bit. Um, negative 6 divided by 2, negative 3. changing this right here, uh, completing the square right here, x squared minus 6x plus negative 3 squared is the same as x minus 3 squared. Now let's simplify the rest of this. Uh, 
negative 3 squared is 9, because negative 3 times negative 3 is just 9. And I have that minus in front of it, so now it's minus 9. And negative 9 plus 4 equals negative 4. Sorry, negative 9 plus 5 equals negative 4. I'm going to leave it at this point. This is technically uh, the end of completing the square. So let's use this equation right here to estimate what the minimum is. So here I have three terms, y, x minus 3 squared, negative 4. So uh, this negative 4 will always be a negative 4, regardless of what my input is. This term right here, though, changes depending on what my input is. So I put in a different x, this term right here will be different. So what is the smallest I can get this term to be? Remember, I'm looking for a minimum, so I'm looking for what is the smallest I can get this term to be. Well, since this has a squared, that means this term can never be negative. The smallest this term can be is zero. So the smallest this can be is zero. Uh, if x equals three, that makes this zero. Uh, let's try that one more time. The smallest this can be right here, this term right here can be is zero. So zero minus four is negative four. Y equals negative four is the smallest value you can have for y. And when does that happen? That happens when x is equal to 3. So when x equals 3, this becomes 0 squared, and then 0 squared minus 4 is just your negative 4. Right here, that is your minimum.